David? What did God appreciate in David? What is God looking for in your life? That he will say, I'm going to put all my power, all the divine energy, all the possibilities of faith, all the possibilities of grace into your life. What's he looking for? The Lord himself tells us in Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 22. Acts chapter 13 verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David. When he had removed Saul, he raised up unto them David. Now we know that God is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of faces. God is no respecter of titles. God is no respecter of tribes. God is no respecter of people. If he removes Saul and he puts David, there must be a reason. And it's very simple. What he found in David, he didn't find in Saul. That's why he removed him. And then he brought on David. That's what God always does. God says, this is what I'm looking for. That's the quality I'm looking for. These are the characteristics I'm looking for. And it doesn't matter. Coming from any tribe. Coming from any community. Coming from any nation. Coming from any group of people. This is what I'm looking for. And whatever he sees those qualities and those characteristics, he makes his choice. And it says in that verse 22, when he had removed Saul, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom he also gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse. A man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. That's what he was looking for. He was looking for a man that will not fulfill, number one, the will of self. Number two, the will of Satan. Number three, the will of society. He will not be a man that society could dribble around. He will not be a man that society will tie a rope around his waist and be dragging him in any direction they pleased. But he'll be a man not under the control of self, not under the control of Satan, not under the control of society. He said, I have found David. It's like the Lord was searching all the tribes of Israel. And then he came to the tribe of Judah. And then he came to the house of Jesse. And then he pinpointed the man. That's my man. That's my man. He will not be controlled by self. He will not be controlled by Satan. He will not be controlled by society. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He said, this man that I found. I've been looking for a man like this for a long time. It's not his name. It's not his title. It's the condition of his heart. It's not his education. It's not his beauty. It's not his physique. It's a heart. For man looketh not on the outward appearance, but God, man looketh on the outward appearance, but God does not look on the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. And when he finds a man whose heart is alive to the will of God, whose heart is aligned to the word of God, he says, I have found a man after my own heart who will fulfill all my will. 
if God can find you this morning, that you make up your mind, enough of the will of self, enough of the will of Satan, enough of the will of society, now, from this moment on, from this time on, I want to fulfill only and always the will of God. That's the man. And that's the woman. It says, which shall fulfill all my will. You understand? Part of the will of God will not be too simple. Will not be too easy. But the Lord was saying, this man is not going to be looking at how high how great, how difficult the challenges are. He will put his heart, his mind to fulfilling all my will. He'll not be fulfilling my will only when he's happy. He'll be fulfilling my will every time, every moment, all the days of his life. He will not be fulfilling my will only when things go his own way. And things are just as he expects. But when things are what he doesn't expect, and conditions and uh, the direction of things are not him, they go in a way he wasn't expecting. And yet he'll make up his mind. I am a man at a God's heart, and I will fulfill all the will of God. If that's your mind today, if that's your heart today, then God can say, I found a man, I found a woman after my heart who will fulfill all my will. Look at verse 36. In verse 36, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God. That's it. Serving your generation, not by the will of self. This is how I like to do it. This is what I will do. This is the place I will go. And this is the thing I can do. And if they don't give me this to do, finish. I won't do any other thing. That's the will of self. He served his own generation, not by the will of society. He served in those generations by the will of God. That's what God is looking at. Come back to 1 Samuel chapter 13. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. For Samuel, chapter 13, verse 14. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. Again, talking to Saul. Talking to Saul. Now thy kingdom shall not continue. Would you look up here for a moment? You see, there are many people that do not understand the word of God. And you know, in this church, we all say, we don't believe it in eternal security for salvation. What that means is there are people that say, once you are saved, you're always forever saved. That's not Bible. That's the doctrine of Calvin. That's Calvinistic. But the Bible teaches there is only conditional security. You are saved, and then you keep on relying on the grace of God. You keep on relying on the strength of the Lord from within, so as to walk and to live in the will of God, in the word of God. Conditional security, not eternal security for salvation. Yet, in this church, there are people that appear to believe eternal security not for salvation, but eternal security in service. Not for salvation, but for service. But the word of God is telling us there is no eternal security for salvation. There is no eternal security for service. And when God chose Saul, if there were eternal security, he would not have removed him. But he removed him because there's no eternal security in the service of the Lord. 
That's why if you are working for the Lord and the Lord has chosen you, he wants you to have the characteristic of abiding in the word of God, abiding in the will of God, abiding in the path of righteousness. If you see, if you go after the will of self, or go after the will of Satan, or go after the will of society, and you abandon the will of God, the consequence is he will act to you like he acted to Saul. It says in the verse 14, but now that kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him, a man at his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Look at Psalm 40. And you see this man at a God's heart. And you see the devotion of his heart, the decision of his heart, the dedication of his life. Psalm 40, as you look at the top of that psalm, you see it's a psalm of David. What did he say? Verse 8. In verse 8, I delight to do thy will. O oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. I delight to do thy will. I rejoice to do thy will. You can tell where his heart was. Psalm 143 verse 10. Psalm 143. Reading from verse 10. Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God. This man said, I know you have called me. I know you have chosen me. I know you have anointed me. And I want to be at the very center of your will. Teach me, Lord, to do thy will. For thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Psalm 57. I'm reading from verse 4. You can see the devotion of the man, the dedication of the man, the decision of the man, the declaration of the man concerning the will of God. In Psalm 5, 7, 57, I'm reading from verse 4. My soul is among lions. I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows. And their tongue is sharp sword. Now you see sometimes when you're in difficulties like this, that's when what's in your heart is brought out. Because you see, your challenges, your difficulties, your situation, your environment, the pressure, the persecution, the opposition, the suffering, reveals what's inside you. And many people, when they are among lions, many people, when the people are set on fire and mischief, and then the pressure is so much upon you, that's when you cop out. That's when you cower. That's when you become like a coward. And then you cannot say, I know I'm called because I want to be in the will of God. I know I'm chosen because I want to be in the will of God. I know I'm anointed because I want to be in the will of God. And this time of challenge, this time of persecution, is not the time to creep and it's not the time to crawl. It's not the time to compromise. You see this man, even though... He was among lions and among the people that are set on fire and set on mischief. Yet you know what he said? But thou, be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have set, they have digged a pitch before me. Into the midst whereof they are falling themselves. Now verse 7. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. He said, even though the challenges are there. 
Even though the persecutions are there. Even though the oppositions are there. Even though the lions appear to be coming at him. He said, all the same, my heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. That tells us then, this was a man totally given to doing the will of God. Psalm 101, Psalm 101, verse 2. In Psalm 101, verse 2, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. You see the decision of a man. These are the characteristics of an unconquerable David. And if you are going to be unconquerable in your life, if you are going to be unstoppable in your life, that Goliath cannot stop you. The Philistines cannot stop you. The opposition cannot stop you. The difficulties cannot stop you. The challenges cannot stop you. The difficult situations cannot stop you. If you are going to be unstoppable and unconquerable, here is what you have to have in your life, in your heart. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will that come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will search no wicked thing before mine eyes. I engage the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. That means I will not give recognition to a wicked person. In verse 5, who so privately privileged slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. He will not be my associate, my friend, my acquaintance. Him that has an high look and a proud heart, will I not permit, will I not allow, will I not suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. It says, I'll be looking for people to surround me. They'll be faithful people. I'll be looking for people to support me. They'll be faithful people. I'll be looking for people to come along, come alongside of me. They'll be faithful people. I'll be looking for people to carry the load with me. They'll be faithful people. You know, that's the mind of a person that wants to be unconquerable. It says, and I shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that walketh deceit, shall not dwell in my house. He that telleth lies, shall not tarry in my sight. So we find the testimony of God concerning this man. And we also find the explanation of his life. The way he decided he was going to live his life out. Those characteristics are what the Lord is looking for today. I pray he will find it, them in you. I said he will find them in you. Now we come back to what actually made him unconquerable. What 